And I don't you always, you know, when those, um, when the videos of the meetings are posted and they still have all the banter, that's always interesting. So. Second episode of the Tonight Show. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Hi, Christina. Oh, wow. We have such a, and Kim's outside. Nice. It's a beautiful oh, day. Nice. Yeah. But Kim, right I was back. just going to look up. Oh, no, sorry. I was just going to look up that little thing we say about the remote Blurb. meetings. Yeah. Got it. Do you have it? Yeah, I should <laughs> I have, it. have yeah, it. Yeah, it's easy for me. I just have it under. I had it for a long time and now I don't know. Yeah, I have it under. I can easily look it up. It's under. Oh, okay, awesome. You want me to open the meeting then? Yeah, if you open it okay. and then yep. that's okay. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, this meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation. That is our official call, call to order, I guess. Yep. No. Right. And that there'll be no in person members of the public in attendance, but we will hear public comment remotely. There's a little bit. Okay. Thank you. And so, our, our, so I guess our meeting is called to order. And yeah. um, so first a, agenda item is a um, public comment. Uh, we don't have any members. Which of the would not include anyone at the moment. Um, no. And the second is the approval of past meetings minutes, which Amber sent to us earlier today. And there was a question that she had on, um, the Thursday, July 7th um, oh, okay. meeting minutes. That was whether or not we could actually approve. It says five to zero, but only four members are present. I don't know if you saw that. <clears throat> I guess we can approve. Can we approve with four members yeah. present? Yes. That's still a quorum. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's what I assumed. But um, I guess we have to edit that, which is our Thursday, July 7th, because there were only for members present at the time stefan of the, was oh of the vote late. okay got it okay yeah yeah um, do I, I can edit that and like send it back to her Hold yeah on. and um those were very extensive meetings um minutes as opposed to our last meeting which was on august 4th which was a quick meeting um <coughs> Right. Where the meetings are a little less. All right, let's. And I know, so Kim, well, Kim Bressup, right? She had emailed about today that she has another meeting. Amherst is back to having a lot of meetings. Um, so, I mean, did we have another? Oh, I see. I think though, did we? Okay, that's fine. No, there was just a question with that. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Added, right. edit, that yeah, was her, her. She was like, wait, but we only had four people at the time when we were doing right. it. Right. Okay. So that's, that's it. Fine. Um, I'll just tell her. That's fine. I just, I'm fixing okay. it right now. And um, okay. yeah, and I did. There... I'll just mention, I didn't put anything about Lincoln Avenue on the agenda for today, but it can be like under our next business or something, but. Okay. It's still kind of coming back. Um, so if we, um, if there, if everyone's read them, um, we certainly can take a motion to approve or amend. I'll make a motion to approve both sets of minutes. With the, that particular. With, um, that, one, with that one change. Great. Okay. And That's a fine. second. Uh, I all those, okay, great. All those in favor, Stefan, could you? Yes, great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we're good. Those and everyone. Okay. So that Thank is um, all five of us this time. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I think the first thing that we're going to get is an update from the two of you on Safe Routes to School. Yeah. Um. So Chris and I met yesterday about safe routes to school though we didn't end up talking about safe routes to school as much as i had hoped um so we did we did have a nice 
We did have a nice like what has happened since we No, I know. So we did have a nice kickoff meeting with San Francisco with the school district. So Kendrick Park on August 24th. Um it was like uh Mike Morris was there and there was a school bus and lots of things and there was a table for safe routes to school um lucy lucy freeman bell is that no what's her last yeah yeah that's yeah. it so freeman bell so she is the safe routes to school coordinator for the four western mass counties and she was present too and we provided information to people about safe routes to school we asked people to fill out a survey um we had a flyer for the Safe Reach to School program for Massachusetts is doing a big event on Wednesday, October 12th. It's like international bike walk, walk, bike and roll to school day. And so they're working on some things and um, the Amherst schools are talking about doing something at each of the elementary schools on that day as well. Um, we got a lot of questions about um, you know, different parts of town, including the Pomeroy Village intersection. Um, and uh, no, it was good. And we, I think you signed up. I mean, I don't know, Chris, how many people did you sign up for the? Oh, um, I don't know, probably 30. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so but we got 30 names of parents who said they were interested in volunteering, or at least that they wanted more info. That's well, great. like Greisimer was there. She signed up, even though I don't. She was just kind of there, hobnobbing or whatever. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, something is just for info. It's just a nice, you know, to get it going. Yeah. 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 No, it was good. So, who has that list? I do. Oh, okay. So, did it ever like get entered or anything? Or yeah, it... I have a, an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, nice. Which... Okay here in this and um this group and i need to email out and i need to make a few phone calls and i need to sure. find a parent at each place who's gonna yeah if you want to can school. you put that um can you put that excel list into our like google folder or whatever sure yeah that'd be great i mean i might know some parents too so so were there people from each school, do you think? Like at least among the elementary schools there probably were. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, um, you know, that was the most. I don't think we had any high school. Maybe there was one high school parent. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was almost exclusively the elementary schools. And now you're a middle school parent, so you can. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. connect with them. Oh, I middle. missed the PGO meeting, but you know, I'll figure that out. Cool, that sounds great. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna go well, and um, you know, the sort of lagging piece that um, we didn't that we're looking for is, um, uh, gosh, is it Jason Sibley? No, Randy Sibley from the transportation. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, department at the schools uh, right. was kind of willing to make us um, maps to show the number of um, families within a half mile, a mile, and a mile and a half radius. Oh, it's, interesting. That never happened. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's important to know because it sort of can help us set definitely realistic goals for um, you know, kids getting back and forth and alternative. Well, and I, I knew too that, you know, like we had presented at one of the TAC meetings this summer, right? We had presented our sort of overview summary findings from our, um, yeah. our field counts. But I think, you know, as we, um, so one thing to just to the rest of the committee, one thing that we wanted to do is just sort of wrap, um, Christy and I talked yesterday about wrapping that up wrapping that up in terms of getting the district and maybe the town just sort of our summary reports of our findings from each of the schools and sort of right. and then I had a summary document that just sort of talks about next steps and things but it is a helpful it is helpful baseline data to have just about how many you know how many kids are in each school and particularly like for 
like I think about like Fort River, right? So Fort River has a number of different magnet programs, like including the Spanish immersion program. And so, I mean, now that program I think is in its like third year, maybe, or at least second. No, it's at least third year, I think. And so, um, so the question is like how, what percentage of Fort River students are still in the Fort River area, like close to the school, as opposed to like from a completely other parts of town. Cause I know that some of the parents that I talked to at that back to school event were saying, well, you know, my kid goes to Wildwood, but I live in a totally different part of, you know, I live in South Amherst or something, right? So that's not really, <laughs> it's not like they're gonna be walking or biking to school. <laughs> so very yeah. often. I mean, some will, you could bike, but you know, people aren't gonna be walking as much and stuff, so. And it was interesting too. So this year when the district put out the school bus schedules, as I noticed, it was the first time that they didn't actually list like the number of kids at each address and stop, which they've always listed previously. Just based on who's eligible to go, not necessarily who actually is going. But they, you know, they traditionally said, you know, like on my street, they'll traditionally say like five Blue Hills Road, like three kids and, you know, which is one end of the street and then the middle of the street. And they always list like the street address specifically with n numbers. And this year they didn't have any numbers. And then they also sent out, Mike Morris had sent something out to the elementary schools about how in certain neighborhoods and things are trying to consolidate the bus stops. And so not having them stop like at each person's, each kid's house is must, which I have them stop in like clusters, which makes a lot of sense, you know, from a time standpoint and otherwise. And it's a good, you know, it's always a good neighborhood experience too. I think this, the, the there may be a state requirement that with kindergartners, that they actually stop at each kindergartner's house, but from like first grade on, you don't have to do that. So, so that's good. It's good for the environment yeah. too, stopping I less. Don't, I don't have anything to say in that regard. I have no, no idea if there was any internal change or directive. No, but did you see, did you, well, the letter, it went out with Mike Morris's like beginning. Yeah, 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 I did. I guess I yeah. was. Oh. Paying that much attention. I know that this year we didn't get a bus assignment. It's the first time <laughs> since we've been in the system that we haven't had to get. Well, you're it. even you're even closer now. I don't know. Are you anyway? Yeah, about the same distance, I guess. Same, same. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. And so, um, you did you had raise the um, other safe routes to school kind of component is the signs and lines grant program. Tracy, did you want yeah. to? Yeah, so we can talk about that briefly. So the Safe Race to School program, the state program, they have two different grant programs. You know, one is a, the bigger infrastructure program that has been used in the past, I think like 10 years ago for improvements at Wildwood. And then there's also this small program they introduced a few years ago called Signs and Lines. It used to be up to $10,000. Um, and now it's up to like six thousand dollars. And what it basically is just paying for some like signs and lines, maybe some new signs, painting some new paint and things like that. I mean, your money doesn't really go far with six thousand dollars. It's also set up where it's a reimbursement program. So, like a um, a community and a school district would need to apply. You know, they'd have to like submit receipts and then get reimbursed. Um, but I don't know, Guilford. We were wondering. I know. Like a few years ago, I had asked at Crocker Farm when I was still a Crocker Farm parent if they'd be interested in it there. I mean, do you think that the way those Safe Reach to School grants work is they need somebody to sign on, you know, approve it at both the the district, the school district level and the town? Is that like, do you think anybody at the town would be like interested? It's small. We would sign. I mean, we'd agree to it, but also... They're only going to give it out to communities that have been members of the safe routes to school program for a while. So you have to actually get back involved or else they won't even. Right. Offer it. Well, so we have been, I mean, right. So now it's been because Lucy um, Freeman Bell, right. She came to this, she came to the TAC meeting like a year ago. And like, we have been in touch with them since then. And the district has been trying to yeah. kick it off and stuff. So I don't know if that's sufficient. 
The application's really easy. I don't know. I don't know either. Lucy yeah, thought that we could apply. Yeah. I mean, she, Lucy didn't discourage us from applying, did she? Yeah. Chris, no, so, yeah. So. She, she was, I don't think she, that she really knew what our yeah. she, she was like, sure, you know, get started. I mean, and, you know, obviously if we're denied this year, once we have yeah. activity under our belt, it'll be a different story, but she didn't discourage us. Okay. So, but, so are, Gilford- are you supposed so to have it? Are you Go supposed ahead. to have an idea of what you want done when you apply? Yeah, to you need to like so indicate what you're going to do. I know that Chris was going to reach out to um. Derek yeah, Shea the, the principal who really Crocker. wants to do the most is Derek um, Shay at Crocker. Um, and I think the thing he's the most interested in would be, um, and then Guilford, we should chat with you about this separately. Moving the um, school zone twenty miles per hour. Flashing lights are literally on either side of the driveway when it comes out onto West Street. Um, and it's uh, not sufficient enough to slow the traffic down in a significant way in front of the driveway. That's their opinion, yes. <laughs> that is their opinion, yeah. But, um, you know, and even compared to the other schools um, and where their slow school zone um, signs are. So I think that that, um, you know, would be his desire. So, yeah. so um, if you <laughs> wanted to dig into that right now, we can. I, I, I hadn't anticipated that we would be talking about that right this second, but I know that that's one of his top things. Well, and we could also ask Derek which other ones he's interested in. What's so, some other, so. other ideas? Yeah, true. Um. I think the program's changed a little bit and we've been going to some of the different um, presentations they've been doing and it seems like they're going to send somebody to help you. Oh, um, interesting. And then based on what they recommend, that'll be what the, the grant will be based on. Um, I mean, that could, I wonder if that's for the bigger grants, like the infrastructure grants no. and not just the even signs and lines, huh? Okay. This for the, from, from what we can tell, they're trying to bring in their people, whether it's a consultant or a contractor or mm -hmm. whoever, to do this, do an analysis and then propose what should be done. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they're doing all that for like these little tiny $6,000 <laughs> reimbursements, but okay. We like um, to pass money around in this state. So, all right. Um, so well, the sure. bottom line is I think Crocker is definitely going to be the most willing and um, enthusiastic about applying for a grant right away. So just to put that on your radar screen, Guilford. And the signs and lines grants, it's like a little one page form online. And it's um it's due by, it's due in two weeks. Yeah. And to I submit it. Just, it it to me, you just need to have a tiny description and like a signature from the school district and a signature from the town. Because that's what it needs. So, um, but if you, I mean, Guilford, if you're on board at least with like trying to do that or something, like we can, I it's think okay. if we talk to Derek and so. I think it'll be fine. The, um, yeah. Cool. And like you said, we could get turned down anyway. But, yes. But, you know, even the, and the, the um, support documentation it says and get some recommendation. I mean, it's just the scale is so small. It just doesn't seem to warrant a lot of, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah. And it'd be good to talk to Derek too about, um, good to talk to Derek about the, what he sees as like the issues around Cocker. So, okay. Great, thank you guys. Um. Did we want to, what is uh, the walk to school Wednesday? Yeah, so that was the one that I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. They put oh, out sorry. a flyer. Oh, they, oh um, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, and so um, it's actually, as I said, it's for the whole statewide program for like um, the whole walk to school, whatever, safe routes to school program. Here's like the flyer. Oh yeah, I saw they and that. Yeah, yeah, and they put one out. Um, and so one thing Chris is going to do is just follow up with each school about like what might be viable to do at schools. I mean, the, the main thing we were talking about maybe is like some walking school buses and having different events. And it would really be dependent on PGO volunteers and 
parents mm -hmm. to like make it happen at school, but. Um, and, then, and I'm anticipating that they won't all be happening on the 12th. Right, that's possible. That's the October time frame. Right. Yeah, so we had talked about trying to do like walk to school Wednesdays for all of October. Um, well, the fifth is Yom Kippur, and then there's this event on the 12th, and then the other two Wednesdays in um, October, right? They, they yeah. Maybe there could be like one event at e like each of the elementary schools on one of the Wednesdays or something, mm -hmm. depending on like what the interest is. Right. So, but just to sort of, you know, introduce it and get parents thinking about it and hopefully get some excitement about it. So, cool. Great. Thanks. And I know that like the Crocker Farm PGOs, well, they're having they're having a back to school event um, actually on the 15th, which is the same day as the downtown block party. So I don't know, but um, but we could reach out to the officers from each school too and just see if there's what interest that might be. So, okay. Oh, and Chris, Chris Recep is here too. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Chris. <clears throat> so yeah. our next um, agenda item is um, any updates from the TSO or other oh. referrals to the TAC. Oh, I I'm think Gilford has something. Sorry, Gilford. Yeah, someone sitting in the audience. Oh, write oh it's Tate Coleman. Um, yeah, can we let him in, please? Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. So Tate, so I know that um so Tate is a, a grad student now at UMass from and he worked out in Berkshire County on like transit. Um I don't know, did everybody has everybody met Tate before? Yes. No. Okay. So do you want to just give us like a quick little intro to you? I know Tate has applied to be on our committee. Oh, great. Um, yeah. But, but, and he's willing to come to our meetings, even not being on our committee. So thank you. It's interesting but. to hear what's going on. Um, so. Thanks. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm a grad student at UMass Amherst in a dual degree in <clears throat> MRP regional planning and civil engineering. Um, very interested in transportation. And uh, I've worked in for the town of Great Barrington. Uh, for quite a few years at this point. Um, right now, I'm the micro transit program director. Um, and, you know, been working in the planning office in various capacities. Anyway. Okay. Okay. All right. So, what else do we have? So, we don't have Andy Steinberg here. Um, he may be at a different meeting. I can just check in with him. Um, I know that the TSO they met, they met a few weeks ago. They met since we last met. Um, but but I haven't heard anything from um, the chair or from Andy. Yeah, right. They were gonna, um, because I went to that meeting. Right, yeah. In lieu of you. And that was in August. Yes. And I think it was the, uh, you know, I had written all this down and I don't, I can't find it, but um, the Kendrick, no. The it was Lincoln, about the parking on Lincoln. Yeah. And that they, there was no, no real discussion. I didn't have to say anything. It's being, there's a public forum that yes, we're attending next, next week. Actually, it's, it's actually moved. So I got an update. Okay. Um, from the sponsor. So the sponsor for that uh, request to change the parking on Lincoln was Jennifer Taub, who lives on Lincoln, right. and she's the counselor for the the old District 3, I guess, um, the new District 4. And um, so she told me earlier this week that because, one, first of all, that 15th, it was originally going to be on the 15th, but it wasn't publicly noticed for the 15th. Oh. Also, there's the conflict too with the downtown block party right. with the bid. Um, so they're actually gonna move it to the, um, I think she said they're gonna move it to the 13th, October 13th. Okay. What she just told me. Um, and I know that Dorothy Pam, who's the chair of the TAC, she wasn't available like in early October or something. So 
Um, yeah, that sounds right to me. All right. I can double check after the meeting, but it was going to be on the 13th. And um, and I didn't put um, I didn't put that item on the agenda, but if we have time at the end, we could talk about it a little or we could talk about it at our next meeting because some of the residents have been, you know, wondering if TAC would like to make any additional recommendations beyond what we had recommended originally. So oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should talk about that. Maybe we should plan it as an agenda item. Yeah, an agenda item for next yeah, time uh, too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Where? Um, okay, great. So um the are okay. there updates on North Pleasant at Kendrick? Go for any updates. We'd be providing that. Yes. Yeah, well, it's one way. It's one way. And let's see, there's at least two do not enter sides signs. Which and everyone two, ignores. And two wrong way signs, too. The wrong way signs are a lot a little harder. And <clears> one way signs and one way pavement arrows and the left turn only and the right turn only. And I mean, Kim, <laughs> are you seeing a lot of people still turning? Yeah. I thought the run one way, the wrong way ones are hard to ignore. No, it's really awful. So I got into, I was on my bike going the wrong way which is allowed, allowed. I know would be allowed yes and I got into a screaming match with somebody who was like oh yeah I saw that but you know it's different from the last time I was here so I was like so turn around and yeah it's been fun there are a lot of people who just ignore it it's really awful well, but the parking situation is much improved. Honestly, it makes the visibility so yeah. much better on that street. It's so much better because they're, you know, it's pretty much wall to wall parking now. So, um, yeah. So it'll yeah, the be minute, good. For the minute the students came back, I saw. <laughs> it's well, it it's like all the way down the street. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, it seems, you know, it seems it's definitely better. And I could definitely see even if if people who are visiting the park could actually park there, it's so much safer for those people. Right. It's really great. Well, and they can park there like on the weekends, right? And after five. No, they can't. Anybody, park if ever, if anybody ever moves. There all the time. Yeah. So, but, th but ultimately they're going to be um, like some, some, pay to park parts of that right so they will be freed up for yes. people who are visiting the park yes yes and if, if you get rid of the if you put the winter parking ban back into effect you'll get rid of a lot of that as well i'm happy with the winter parking ban who isn't happy with there, that there is we no got winter rid of, parking we got rid of it because there's insufficient because there's a lot of things developed where there's not sufficient off-street parking so yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like that's just a big parking lot now. But but whatever. At least it's safer for site site yeah. views there. So. And there's still the metered parking at the ends and things. Well, at the two way part, yeah. And on um, the other street, Halleck on Halleck, there's a couple meters on Halleck. And I mean, the pattern that I had noticed, and I I mean, I had seen people who I think before the one, wrong way signs went up. Um, like one thing, one pattern that people do a lot is like coming from the north, like coming from UMass and North Pleasant is they would turn on to that section of North Pleasant and then they would also turn on to Halleck and they would like skip downtown. And so I did stop like a right. few, I did stop a car and say, you know, it's now one way. Right. It's yeah. all marked for one way and um and I think personally, I, I, you know, initially, I mean, it, it first went up that day of that event with um, the public schools, like the back to school. Oh, event. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I, I mean, but there's been the more signs. I mean, the wrong way signs and things are, they're pretty hard to ignore. Like you might, people might be like looking down and just doing what they always do. But I mean, now there's enough signage that people should be noticing. Hopefully. I mean, and if it's a big problem, I mean, maybe there needs to be like some enforcement or something. Yeah. Or, Although today it seemed like coming back, uh, 
at five where, you know, there's kind of a backup at the rotary and people aren't using it as a cut through. So weren't good. today, at least for the three minutes I was on it. So that's or maybe good. Maybe the Amherst police could just put a car there, like even without yeah. an officer in it or something. I've been thinking about that. Yes. So, um, so, so, so it's really one question it is I know I one question I know Marcus wanted to bring up and it's just on the north end right because it was originally two lane like two directions two lanes is that it's very wide right there and that the DPW crews they did mark it on the pavement you know so that it's to say like stay in the one lane only but then um I mean, I guess there could be really wide turners or something, but I mean, is it possible to even have like a, I don't know, like a temporary barrier or something? No, at, it's at all. No, because trucks can't make the left turn. Oh, but how many oh, trucks yeah, are going to yeah. be going now that it's, it's, isn't it hard for trucks to be on there in the first but, place? But moving <laughs> trucks and stuff will still have to be on there. And there, there is actually a lot of construction, you know, in the back, like in the mm, back. That's true. Room. So, I mean, this, this is the reason why we don't like to do things partially. I just told Tracy this already. No, yeah, I know. We, if yeah. we had ripped everything up and redid everything, it would look like something totally different. It wouldn't look the same right. for one. Yeah. The no, second is we could have raised the pavement that you're talking there, the paved area you're talking about. We right. could raise that up so it's uh, uncomfortable right. for cars to drive across, but trucks could still drive across it. Like an ah, apron. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, I agree so, with you, Guilford. I mean, ideally, right, it all gets done at the same time, there, but there isn't the funding. And I mean, what if it's not in like next year's work plan either, right? It needs to. Uh, honest, the, honestly, I and like Kim is seen safer. like a huge it's safer. A safer. It's a lot it's safer a lot already. Safer. And it's all. It's a lot and safer. I think, you know, if there is some police enforcement or whatever, not even ticketing, just like letting people know. And and this, I mean, there's enough signage now. Like, I think it will it will get out of people's head to do it. Hopefully just just removing all those the, the obscuring the sight lines from the driveways really okay. has made that street a lot safer. So, so. Gilford, do you, do you think there's any would it be possible to have like one of those little except bike signs where it says do not enter if we don't have it striped for a bike lane? Um we've been talking about it. Um we've kind of run, we've kind of run into some opposition to that. Oh, okay. you're doing what? Well, what? I was just so I had suggested. I mean, well, I'd talk, I'd asked Jason and Guilford just about in some places, and they do this in like Cambridge and Somerville and parts of Europe sometimes, is you have these streets that are considered bike streets. And if we've significantly cut down on the cut through traffic and things, like, so what you can do, what you do on those streets is that you have one way car traffic or motor vehicle traffic and then two way bike traffic. And that you don't, on some of them, you have bike lanes designated and marked on the pavement. But a lot of times you don't, you just, you basically will let the bikes bike where they feel like the safest, which hopefully isn't in the middle of the road and things. And that you, so you're basically accommodating the two-way bike traffic instead of, because right now, right, if you, if you look at the do not enter sign, you could say that that applies to bikes too. So like Kim, if you're biking, Oh yeah, no, no, no. I got into an argument. Yeah, I got so. into an argument with a with a guy in his car about that. So, you know, I couldn't explain that I'm on the committee that like just and I know that this is two way. I so, didn't get into that. Well, I was arguing, but yeah. So I mean it's the like, studies haven't shown the studies haven't it. shown like an increase like risk to bicyclists or anything if that happens. And I don't know, a part of me too would even argue that even when the road is redesigned, like if you're gonna have all the back end parking and and also yeah. we're still gonna have on the west side, you're still gonna have all those driveways. In those situations, it can be safer to not oh, actually yeah. have a striped bike lane where people feel like I have to stay in the bike lane because if people are, you know, turning into or coming, you know, it's just, you want the bikes to feel like I can bike where I feel safe and things to me but okay but it is much nicer honestly thank you thanks thank you girlfriend see yeah much much nicer one happy customer you don't only get complaints 
And thank Jason too, right? Jason and the crews who did it, so. Okay. Um, so our next thank order you. of business is um, something that says so, question. Yeah, so this was a question that uh, Stefan had asked to go on agenda and, and hopefully he can get off Stephane, mute too you if you wanna speak. But just in general, I'll just, he, um, he had emailed me asking about one particular fatal crash, the one on Route 116 with Sunderland Road, like with there, where there was a northbound driver. Um, there was a three car collision with a northbound driver who died on the scene. And like there were two southbound drivers. I think that it probably happened like at the left turn lane at that. Just before the left, just right. before the, yeah. yeah. Um, so the question that had come up and it's come up at the committee sometimes before it's just like i know that those crashes they get reported in the state databases and things but i know this committee has had discussions just about like particular cases where there have been fatalities and just you know is there a way that the committee can be informed about them or like look at those intersections i mean some of this has to do with you know what is the tax charge which i know it's like still under review but just, and I, I know Guilford that you've mentioned and too that in some cases, right, even like it can be years before like the whole like investigation of a accident crash fatality like is closed. But I didn't know like, for example, when the crash reports happen, like when there are crashes and, um, and the reports are generated, like how, who gets them at the town and like generally, or is it all just sort of in like the state system or what happens? Like you, don't this is, a, you don't see it show up into the state system until it's been released. And they're not okay. gonna release it until they're done with their investigation and determine what charges uh, to file, if there's any charges. Right, okay. And what's so the time frame for that usually? It take a while. But there's they can no, show up. They can show up in the state database for the crashes, like the online portal that MassDOT has, like within like a month or two. That's but they're just not, a, yeah. But yeah, that's, they're just recording it, right? They're not telling about it or anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a a summary, and that's that's all you that's all you you'll get. I mean, you can the police hold them until they're ready to release them, and then they're released. Okay. So, and when the re police release them, depends on. The investigation what's going on sure you may never the police may never release this one because it's not a town road oh okay it's in it's in amherst but the accident happened on a state layout on the 116 mm -hmm. right yeah okay got it but if you notice when you drive through the intersection now they've marked it for um aerial survey okay so I, they imagine that Bao Lang has got something going on where he's going to look at the intersection and look at probably making some changes. And Bao Lang is the intersection guy for District 2's Two, um, yep. last DOT office in Northampton. Okay, yeah. I thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. So so one thing I did, because I had been, um, I had pulled like the state crash database, the one that's online for the last like 20 years, I looked at it to see how many crashes were recorded there. And, and there weren't that many, like compared to other parts of one, like compared to, for example, like Meadow Street or something, right? <coughs> I think I only found like seven, even over that state database online. I'm not sure how complete it's, I mean, it's probably their best records, but it only had over the 20 year period, it only had, I think like seven or eight crashes. Um, and most of them were like single vehicle crashes. Um, property damage only crashes. There was only like one or two that had like any kind of injury or potential injury reported. I mean, Not they all, they all get reported on that database. No, right, yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying is like, if you look over 20 years, the fact that that particular intersection had only had like seven or eight crashes, most of them are like single vehicle or property only crash. Like it's not a high, in terms of like which inter intersections have the most safety issues, it's not one of the highest, but. No, that's, it's not, that's not. So like compared to say, compared to Meadow Street or some, like there's many other ones that are more. So just like for context of it, um, yeah, okay. 
Did yeah, I guess. Three. Yeah, I mean, I guess. So, I mean, just, you know, because like there was the one in like the North Amherst crash on North East Street. And I don't know. I mean, so I guess. And again, this could point to like the tax charge, like if there was ever. If the town ever reviews some of them, like does the town ever end up reviewing like crashes, like fatal crashes or serious injury crashes that have happened to say, is there anything that we should do differently at the intersection or only do you do it? like over a longer period of time or um you know well, there, there's thing we review some some are not reviewed some there's cir some circumstances that aren't even oh really in the report that come out and mm -hmm. decide not to make any change. right okay um so you know there were those two awful incidents on campus lately now you um last year last fall spring i don't know when it was they were in the spring um, yeah in the early and, spring um, right but are those, you said those aren't considered streets are those how are those they're reported Didn't... they're in the database they are okay yeah they're not really they're not really streets yeah right it's just an accident on umass campus uh that's how it's kind of it's they give the location but it's really not a it's really not tied like our accidents are to it because it's because it's not a real street it's a fictitious yeah, it's a, yeah and it's not an amherst like a town of amherst yeah, it's not a town of amherst street right just curious thank you um yeah. Stefan, did okay. you have any other questions does that answer the questions you had yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, I guess it's unfortunate we can't really get the information because um, it was a pretty bad accident, obviously. And I know, I understand Trace saying, you know, there's other areas in Amherst which um, have worse, you know, more common, or more common incidents that have occurred. But, um, but I don't know, I mean, I guess just particularly because it is a fast road. I mean, it's 50, mm -hmm. quote unquote, meaning, you know, people always don't do that. But um, and especially, I don't know, like I've driven through there many times and just having a turn lane with no warnings, it seems very, uh, just, just, I don't know, very vulnerable to people just sitting in that lane with people passing at 50 miles an hour, you know, a few feet away. So I was never a huge fan of that turn, um, particularly or passing people, but I don't know if we got more information other than, you know, knowing an accident happened there, which we all know of, that would be yeah. useful. I guess it's not really up to us, unfortunately. No, so. I agree. Well, and I think too, like Stefan, right? What Guilford was saying is that the district tree mass DOT that they're looking at, like he can, right? He's already in, they're already indicating at least, you know, in terms of marking it up and stuff that they're going to be making some changes there anyway. So, yeah, I right. mean, if you, so that's if you drive good. through, you'll see the survey markers. They're all, there's four corners, the four corners are marked, and the intersection, the accident, which okay. is still marked on the road, is definitely in the middle of all of the, the, what they're surveying. Okay, that's good to, that something's happening. So it would be interesting yeah. to see what comes of it. Well, and, and I mean, to Kim's questions about the UMass campus, right? The U, UMass has made a lot of improvements on Mass Ave. So, and in other sections too, right? Like also Commonwealth Ave and things, right? They, like the Gazette article said it was like $2.5 million of investment on pedestrian safety and things. And it's great to see, especially on Mass Ave, because that's always been like one of the highest crash locations on campus, or at least like the last few decades or something. Well, at least, at least where those those um, crashes and fatality occurred last year, I mean, that was totally, I mean, you must shut down sidewalks for God's sake. I mean, that was really irresponsible of them. <clears throat> so yeah they might have made improvements but that was putting back a freaking sidewalk that was there before so sorry but well and they're addressing other safety issues too in to different parts of the road but that right. road is still very like it's still not very safe for crossing and whatever but I it's not that, our road so we can't do anything about I it i think though that i saw like among the improvements, I feel like they're making like um like speed tables and 
I mean, there, there are improved if we're crossing. doing something over the summer, but I haven't gone. I actually haven't. I used yeah, that it's used pretty logo. huge. Yeah. Actually, it was a little ironic to me, at least because, because I work right on Mass Ave. And when they were in the process of making all of those improvements, they actually had like closed the sidewalk in the, in the crosswalks, like in the sections near the improvements. Mm -hmm. So, which yeah. was, uh, I mean, you know, so they were like working on them and they were trying to get them done before the students were back and they were, everything was reopened before the students were back. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that. yeah. So hopefully it will be safer, but okay. Wow. We're whipping right through the meeting. Great. Next item are the. Yes. Yeah, so we just, we just, we just had continuing items. I've just been leaving these on the agenda, but um just this whole bicycle pedestrian priorities network map. I just didn't want to lose sight of this just because it seems like as some of these conversations are happening with the council about, you know, sidewalk improvements or even with street lights or things like that about like having having identified like where the priority pri pedestrian priorities are. Um, now, Guilford, you didn't have any updates on it, right? So I think we're going to have to see if, you know, I know that. Um, Don't we just need a student, somebody to finish it off? Like do the. Well, and Ollie has, Ollie has started, like she's doing the double program that I think it's the same program that Tate's doing, or at least she's a, she's a full-time grad student again. Um, but hopefully we're Mike gonna, Warner, we'll Mike Warner for... had contacted me a few times about it. So. I we're just, just going to have to wait a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, the problem I see with waiting is that the streets are changing and the priorities are changing, right? Because Wildwood is no longer going to be a school and we need to add more, more notice to um, where the new mega school is going to be. So I don't know, we have to pay more attention and probably put more, more priority down there now. So the more we wait, the less relevant it becomes, right? Mega school override going to pass? <laughs> I don't know. That's not up to us, right? So <laughs> I hope it's so. Up to, it's up to the, the four voters on here, five voters. That's true. I'm voting for it. I mean, right right now, there, there's, I mean, there's talk going on about what to do with Wild uh, Fort River because they're moving everything over there. Right. Um, the town manager has information for starting a peer review of what the what was proposed. Um, there's a lot of people who in the past have been really opposed to what was proposed by the by the consultant for the school. So, um, I oh, wait, guess are you talking? Kinda, are you talking about at Fort River or at Wildwood yeah. or at okay. Fort River? Fort River. Oh, for the building itself. No, for the traffic and improvement. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one as far as like, yeah, especially the mornings are so crazy, even well, with us. Yeah, no, I mean, I would hope that if if the town becomes like more active in the Safe Routes to School program, I hope the town would be eligible for some of those like bigger funds because they they haven't sent money over to Fort River yet with that program. It also, com and, also comes down to priorities. Of course. Are you going to take the take parts of the East Street common to make it roadway and take down trees to make it roadway to accommodate the recommendations from the consultant for the school. So the last time we last time we did some work in that area, we took a little bit of the East Street common and you thought we had chopped somebody up and left them buried or laying out on the common. Um, so um, but that was 10 years ago. So maybe it's a little different now. So, um, well, the East Street Common, so it's the East Street Common is that strip of land between that like secondary road. And, but what is it doesn't, what does it get used for? I mean, it's just a, isn't it mainly a buffer? I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I don't know. And I don't, your, and your um, cow livestock. Too. I just don't know like a, the historic context of it. And, but, but there's, isn't there going to be like affordable housing? Like across the street from Fort River too, as well as affordable housing on 
Belchertown Road and I mean the even without changing Fort River like there's other changes in that neighborhood in that area too. Yeah. And with that and the new the new housing that's on that street I mean wouldn't um like across from Fort River wouldn't it actually need to have when you maybe need to make some like road improvements over on that side too like isn't that like a one way street or it is a one way. I mean, so you, you need to make some change, like there need to be changes for that too. I think about. Gilford, why are you saying we have to wait? Are you saying we have to wait because of the Fort River thing or? Oh no, I just oh. need a person who frees up. I got two interns working right now and one's working on a project that's gonna go probably until December. Oh, uh, okay. And I have another person working on a project which is actually the Route, Route 9 Belchtown Road design and when they okay. finish that up they, they could possibly work on it right okay what can we do, what 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 can we do for you to divert that person's time toward it like can we bake you cookies? i'm not gonna do it <laughs> you're, you're not gonna do it no well i guess uh, are your interns continuing <laughs> after the fall they semester could, they could do it after they finished up their other thing yes well, that's what I you mean, said yeah yes i, I mean one one project is to re, is to re redo Belchtown Road all the way from Southeast Street to the to the town line, um, yep. which is something people have been pushing out of, pushing yeah. on a great deal and actually sure. would help with the Fort River School yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one that project has been languishing, and this person's working on that pretty much all the time. Um, the second project is required by DEP, and if we don't do it by the end of the year, we get a twenty four thousand dollar fine every day we don't do it. So, um, oh, absolutely. I mean, no, I mean, and this is, and this, I mean, the map, the thing with the map is that it's, I mean, the reason we want to have, the reason I've wanted to have the map done is right, just so that we have it, like it was part of the bicycle pedestrian plan, right? It would be nice to, and it was like one of the kind of main products of the plan in terms of moving forward and saying, you know, as you look at the capital improvements next year or other things, like to point, be able to have the council look at that plan if they support that, if they support that map and then point to that and say like, these are the identified priority bike corridors, these identified pedestrian corridors. I mean, to Kim's point, like they will change, but just to have it like on record with a clean map that can be shared and distributed and things. Because actually like I was on the town website and I, I don't know, I typed in bike routes or something and it showed like some really old map from the public transportation and bike committee that I think is like back at least like 10, 15 years old or something. And that's the only thing that came up. So it's, it's helpful to have the new map. I understand the, the actual like active construction projects and things that we need to get those done. So, and we had, and we had talked about it back, I think it was actually in 2021, like we had the like six meetings or something where we went through the map like in detail so it just okay. not to lose all that and, like keep that alive that's all so that's why i had put it back on the agenda but that's I mean, great. One, of, one of the things we've talked about before is there's really no support staff support no yeah to do little things there's staff support for the meetings and the bring in right no i understand no yeah. staff support and we keep saying you know that's something right. we talk to your counselors to bring up is their so Gilford, are, Gilford, you're saying some some people could be helpful by making the case to our town council that perhaps we could have some additional staffing in DPW to be able to help with these projects that those of us on this call think are important. Yeah. Yes. Or we other yeah. or we other projects too, right? We said this for a while. I mean, the charge, the charge is the other thing is get the charge where oh, it absolutely. should be. Yeah. And then get staff that can help support it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. It's in progress. I, I mean, I haven't heard anything from the town manager lately about the charge. Have you, Guilford? No, I, oh, we're all okay. talking zero I'm waste. Sorry, right are now. you guys saying charge or charge? No, no, the charge, like basically the what is the under the purview of the TAC? Like, because there's been talk about like making, in terms of making the tack more effective or whatever. <laughs> and having a description of what the tack is responsible for that actually reflects what the tack 
is doing, can do, should do, things like that to update it because the old one is back from when there was a select board and not a and not a council. So that's all. Thank you. And I know that I mean the I, I know that the a new charge will go to TSO at some point for review and then go to the council for review. So that's another one of the ongoing items. So hopefully we can <laughs> move it along at some point. <laughs> And, and just in that vein, I mean, the reason I had put this continuing item, this North Pleasant Street north of Eastman Lane on just on as a continuing item to myself. And I mean, this is a section of roadway, you know, that DPW drew it out in CAD, like in terms of the design, um, it doesn't have any funding to do it. It seems with some of the other projects that it's probably not the highest priority right now either. But just because we had done this site, um, because we had done those two different site visits to it, and and I just wanted to make sure that we sort of sum, like summarize it, write it up, and get it get something at least on the record is like that back in again. I think by now it's like 2021 that TAC reviewed it, and this is what we recommended at that time, and just to like kind of put it to bed for now until it you know comes up again. But I mean, maybe some of that, maybe that some of that stuff could be incorporated into UMass transportation improvements and things. I don't know. So, Guilford, how far along is that North Pleasant Street um, between Eastman Lane and Pine? Council's seen it, and the council's given yeah. theoretical approval to it. So it's, it's just a matter of yeah. starting to move along little pieces of it. It'll so this is one of those things that um, could potentially be on the. CDBG um, list of things that could be paid for with CDBG money. Parts of yes, it. but yeah, yes, yeah, because it includes um, like lower income residents. Oh yeah, in, in yeah. some of those so we're complexes. Looking for projects yeah. to um, put on that list right now. Definitely, sure. it could it could use some um, it could use sidewalk improvements on. I mean, so the larger project. You know, it has a widened sidewalk on both sides, and I think, and, and it has it like switching, like the bike route switching across the street. Um, and some sections of the sidewalk are very narrow, and they're overgrown, and the lighting is poor. Yeah, I remember seeing the and, plan. Um, yeah, and I think that's a great project. So, and that's um, a really high. I mean, when, I know on our site visits, like when the students were getting off the bus, you know, after school the UMass students is that um, there are places where there, there's a big gap in terms of how far you go in between crosswalks. So they're crossing the street, but then you also see them walking along these like narrow sections that really, it's like a huge footpath without much of a sidewalk, but that's just where they all go. So one and, thing with CDBG projects is you have a certain amount of money to spend and you have a certain amount of time to spend it in. And it's usually not enough to finish a project. Mm. It's usually enough to do part of a project. So in this case, you know, we may have as much as a million dollars, but it's wow. divided among three projects. Sure. So that means you've got two hundred, you know, three hundred thousand dollars. So I don't know how much of that project could be done for three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Cause now now also, I mean, the times we visited the um north. Is it North Apartment, whatever the- North the, Village. North Village wasn't, but now North Village is being recreated, right? Mm -hmm. So when we were, it was it was right. all closed off and or, and or under construction, but now students are starting to, uh, and family- Yeah, are, so they were saying, right, the North Village, the new North Village, whatever, I forget what it's called, but it's still under, it's family, it's grad student family housing. But it's like also North it's low, Village was. low income too, usually, yeah. And that there were some units available for occupancy this fall, but that it's also, they're still building it out like the rest of it. So but, anybody who lives there is in the middle of like the construction, <laughs> but, yes, um, but I, I mean, I yeah, guess no, my for sure. Yeah. When we were looking at it, it wasn't that one. No, absolutely. Bring more right. families and small people. Absolutely. And, yeah. and also it is low income housing. Right. I was going to ask if that would have a bearing on applying for a grant because that whole Definitely. complex will be reopened I would imagine by next year yes 
Well, you have to show with the CDBG project that it's serving low income people. Right. So that's that's what makes this appealing to me that yeah, you know, I think that would be pretty easy to show. Yeah. But I don't know how Guilford feels about that and it, whether it's worth it to do a small portion of this project with that uh, you know kind of money, a couple of few hundred thousand. I have no preference. Um, I know there are people in town hall who do have preference about doing using using CDBG money or any town money right now in this area. So um, they have preference against it or preference for it. Um, a little bit against it, I'd say. Mm. They see other things that are more important for the general population of the town. Mm. Okay. Well, well, that's my that's my feeling. Yeah, it's good to know. This is something we're going to be talking about in the next few months, anyway. So. Yeah, I mean CDBG. The committee is already meeting, and like, what's the time frame with the CDBG grants, Chris? Well, the CDBG um, committee is meeting, but they mostly talk about social service projects. Ah, okay. The really capital projects are initiated by town staff. <coughs> okay. And then they make it into like the capital improvement then plan, right? Makes if it into a CDBG grant application. Right, got and it. And if you have plans that are already developed, it helps you to get the money. Like we used CDBG money for um, Mill Lane, right, Guilford? We did. Yeah, so that's an example. And also East Hadley Road. Mm -hmm. Right. So those were done kind of piecemeal, little chunks of it. And, that, and that second section of... Oh, the section of Mill Lane you're saying from um, 116 to the park, right? And that's yep. CDBG too, yeah. Yep. Okay, nice. Yeah, I mean, that's such a nice connection there. Mm -hmm. So, great. <coughs> it was over, it was a three-year project. So they used wow. three sets of CDBG money. Mm -hmm. Yep. So did it have to go through, did it have to go through CBDG each year? No. Yeah money is subsequently oh so each year yeah yeah you're right but it's really just going through town staff and town staff decides what do you want to okay. spend money on and then we get right. them all to agree sure and we put it into the application it doesn't have to go through the committee those well, projects that said, Christine, is, it, is it possible that that's how this would be approached like if this were cbdg this year um and it's only 300 k would the town essentially continue to do another 300K for the next three years to complete the project? Or I don't even know how much it costs. Yeah, but. so I, I'll have to talk to Dave and other people in the planning department and see right. how, um, how this ranks against other things that they've got going on. Well, and, the, and some of those housing projects like we're talking about too, like the ones near Fort River, like you could use... Can you use CDBG money for some of like those, like if you're going to do some transportation improvements or infrastructure improvements over there a little? A target area, but it's, I don't no. know. Anyway. I think okay. One. Thank you for my, like suggesting that. I guess so. To be continued. Okay. Um, let's see, Kim. So like our next item was just to. Sorry. Both. The next item was just to go look at the um, TAC meeting agenda. Right. I mean, the future meeting dates and potential agenda items. Mm -hmm. um, so Guilford, so I had originally want, thought that we would have the meeting on the 15th, but I don't really want to have it against the block party. Um, and so September 22nd, Guilford, you had said you weren't available. Correct. And, yeah. So do you think so Jason um, can be there? Jason? Oh, that would be great. Okay. Thank so you. That would be awesome. Great. September 22nd. Is that what we just said? Yeah. So September 22nd and Jason will be here. All righty. Guilford, which will be great. Um, and then if we just, just working out on the calendar, like October 6th and then October 20th. I did talk to, there were a few guest speakers I wanted to invite. Um, Mitty Dom had put me in touch with um, the Western Ma 
Western Mass Rail Coalition people. Um, it, like the Western Mass Rail project is moving forward. Um, and I did bring it up over at an earlier TAC meeting about whether we want to have them come and speak to us or not. Um, so I did talk to somebody from them who's working with them and he said he could come on October 20th. Um, so that could be an item instead of some of these, you know, repeating the same items over and over on our agenda. So we kind of get to hear what's going on with that project. And then um, I also have been in touch with Valley Bikes um, and their outreach person just got back to me today. And I, I, I wasn't sure. She said she was available to come on September 26th. I told her the dates of our meeting, so I don't know whether she meant to say September 22nd or October 6th. So I just need to clarify from her, but we'll also have her come to one of our future meetings. Um, because what about, go ahead. What about, what about a PBT that we, we used to have the PBTA yeah. wrap here and you know, I mean, it, we, it, that was all disrupted during COVID and things were all, but I'd be really interested in seeing um, how ridership is doing these days yeah. and the things they're thinking about. Right. So we have had the Amherst rep to the PVTA come to our meetings, but we could also see if anybody from UMass Transit wants to come to I mean, if we want well, I'm just, I'm just interested in how. Oh, you know, yeah, for sure. New routes. Um, or if they're cutting, I've heard they might be cutting back some things. I'm just curious, like, mm -hmm. yeah, what that's looking like these yeah. days. Yeah, no, that's a good item. Like we used to get like, you know, every pretty much every season, it seemed like we had like every few months we had that. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we've been inviting him. Oh, okay. We've been inviting Doug Slaughter who's the rep like at least you know once a year or the once every guy that or something well Glenn, a long time ago Glenn 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 and, and, yeah. and al by him glenn's Wait, retired glenn, glenn oh, and al oh, okay. are retired oh okay actually they're hiring umass transit they're hiring for new so glenn was a umass person yeah he yes. was um he okay. was the head of, oh, okay. of the operations after al by him and he was assistant before that no, those are those are good ideas. Um, other potential stuff for the agenda is we pr should probably have just to do it like once a year to have an election. If anybody wants to, if anybody wants to, you know, be a, a co-chair, vice assistant chair, or anything, and we can keep the status quo, but just offering it up. Um, and the other thing I would like to bring back to the council, I mean, to the TAC is um, just a discussion about Lincoln Avenue parking. So the public hearing did get put off until mid-October, as I mentioned earlier. So one thing that's come up with people in the neighborhood is about um, what, so what we had recommended is we had supported what the DPW had recommended previously about um, restricting um, parking on on one side of the street, banning parking on one side of the street um, all the time. And then on the other side of the street from like the eight to five, which is the standard where a lot of the neighborhoods around the campus, including the ones um, you know, north of Eastman Lane and things, they have those restrictions. Um, and doing it on Lincoln. And then we also, because in terms of like spillover demand, so already like the residents of Lincoln have been talking about, so now that the UMass um, semester started, it started on Tuesday, then now if you go on Lincoln and I was walking along Lincoln today, but it is like wall-to-wall -wall students like parking yeah. in the places on street where parking is allowed. Right. If you look there last week, there was almost nobody on the street and now it's wall to wall. Um, so they had asked. So one thing we had done with the spillover is currently on Sunset. Um, east of I mean, south of Elm Street, that there's actually no restrictions on parking on either side of the road. We had recommended it be on one side that it be banned on one side. Just it didn't seem like it was necessary to have parking on both sides there. But some people on Sunset and on Lincoln are have been asking about maybe potentially 
if there should be a recommendation to restrict parking on the other side of Sunset too, because they are really concerned about um, that if the parking is restricted on Lincoln, that people will just move over to Sunset because it's so close. So I don't know. We could put this on a TAC um, agenda item before the public hearing to see if we wanted to make any additional comments and I can circulate stuff back. So just for food for thought. Yeah. Um, and yeah, did anybody good. else have any other, you know, items that they want to put on future agendas? Can we can we talk at some point again about um, East Pleasant Street? We had talked about um, extending the sidewalk. Yeah. Where it ends now at Olympic uh, entrance to Olympic Village and Olympic Park. Yeah. Um, and I believe wasn't Guilford wasn't there going to be some sort of a study done about that corridor or am I remembering that correctly? Yes, we had a surveyor come in and survey and then we have the draft survey in the office now and we just going through it. Okay. Okay. So Guilford, could we like get an update from you at like one of our meetings in October or something? Do you think it would be ready to share with <laughs> us? Sure. Sure, Great. okay, thank you. Yeah, actually, if you want Jason to tell you where it is, you can ask him. Oh, well, way. you know, when Jason's here, we're going to know. That would be on the existing conditions, right? Existing. Yeah, conditions. we haven't yeah. we haven't gone through and verified. They got everything we need, they need to get in the survey. So that's where it is. Mm. OK. Thank also, you. Do we, do we ever want to bring back again the possible reconfiguration of traffic around the South Amherst Common? Because there was yeah. a really good town yeah, plan no, that I, looked great. I mean, those were on our list. So this is the thing is, I think part of this has to do with like the tax charge and how, I mean, like I've shared, right, we had written something up and said like, these are our priority projects, but since we're an advisory committee, I mean, are, should we be telling, should we be telling the council like these are the tax priorities or like, how do we, well, how do we relate I mean to it? And <laughs> so. It seems like the, the TSO is just reactionary and we're more like, uh, you know, looking at things and planning, <laughs> planning. Well, you know. well, and one thing that's in our current charge that has been talked about for like if the charge is re revised, but it does say that we can advise, you know, as part of the capital improvement plan, like that comes out every year in terms of like recommended future investments and things, right? And we've identified, you know, the five, six projects. So we did that last year, you know, we did that when this new council came in, like in December and we talked about it and we can do that again in the fall and we can say, continue to say like, these are our list of projects that we well, think deserve like additional the, consideration. The, the, what, what the town came up with for that South Amherst area looked really logical and it's already been, um, there are plans that are drafted and so forth. It seems like something that if we could proceed with it. Sure. Point, no, that uh, would be good. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a meeting in that neighborhood to talk about the possible plans with the neighbors there. Or... And that might be a good thing also to bring up with those counselors too. Mm -hmm. But also yes. I think, I think we, for, if, if I, I, I might be mistaken, but I think we were looking for more like data that we ended up not that ended up not being collected because of the pandemic and the changes right. to traffic pattern and stuff. So mm. now that we're back to it, you know, those things could right. seem like that was the next step was looking at the traffic yeah. pattern, something about that. I forget exactly. You're, but... you're right. I forgot about that. There was to yeah. be some sort of a traffic study. And that yeah. was a few years ago because I mean, but I've was... been, I've been coming to the TAC meeting since like 2019 and it was never discussed like you the yeah. inventory was earlier i guess yeah. um i think I mean, that's a great was, that's a great thing all, to bring up again yeah it was all set to go and then the pandemic you know oh, got it. Gilford, how would you go about getting that yeah. work um paid for if you wanted to redo that those roadways there like i'm thinking the things that i know about cdbg money and you know mass works money those would not be available but are there other pots of money that would be available to do that kind of work? Always money. It's just who, what do you want to spend it on? Priorities, right? Yeah. Is that I mean, something that would come out of like chapter 90 money or? 
It might, but South Amherst might may not be considered that important because it was repaved like six years ago and it's mm -hmm. the roads are actually in pretty really good shape mm -hmm. so people may not want to make the changes now mm -hmm. we did I mean, put up the we did put up the yield signs which that helps i think, think yes are, thank you i i appreciate that yeah so yeah but also um the the um the north amherst right like that all mess that whole mess at that those intersections there yeah, Which you're gonna the, the Don Donna. Yeah, they're gonna be pushing for that one soon. Actually, again. um, Eve Vogel told me she wouldn't be at our meeting today because they had a North Amherst meeting that they've been meeting weekly—a North Amherst planning meeting—and they're talking about transportation. So, yeah, supposedly Mr. Zomack is at that meeting talking oh. about the intersections. There I go. Oh, oh, okay. Good. At their meeting. Okay. Yeah, so we can revisit some of that too. Yeah. Um, no, that's good. And and also, I guess, so one other project for South Amherst is just the Pomeroy Village. So Guilford, at our last time this came up, as you had mentioned that it was going out to bid for the work, but that construction would probably start in 2023, right? There wouldn't be anything this fall, likely. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Oh, I thought I saw so something... We got Go bids ahead. in. We got oh. bids in. The contractor is going to probably be Caracas. That's the contractor working on Route Nine. Oh, um, okay. We're about four hundred grand. Oh, well, actually, we're about five and a half million. Oof. No, five five hundred fifty thousand over is what we are. That's what we are. Wait, and how big was the grant? The grant wasn't that. The grant was one one and a half million. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> so. Um, We'll work it out. We'll get started. Um, it's probably some drainage work we've probably done this year, but we're not going to probably start doing the bulk of the work until next construction season um, because of the supply issues. Mm -hmm. ran it. Okay. And so wait, you said they're also working on Route 9. Where are they working on Route 9 now? This is the contractor doing the Route 9 project. The Route 9, you're saying the one between the University of oh, the MassDOT one? Oh, okay. I thought I saw something in the paper about the, um, you know, just north of the that intersection, the bridge that you can't cross over the sidewalk anymore in there. Is that getting, I thought I saw that was getting fixed. Yep, the bridge will show, they made the bridge. The bridge was constructed um, last, middle of last month and they deformed it the, for just a couple of weeks ago. Um, it'll probably be delivered sometime in October. It goes to the um, Conservation Commission on the 14th or 15th for their blessing. And uh, okay. then that's it. Wait, so the, the bridge you're talking about, is that the one near Groff Park? No, this no, is the little bridge? pedestrian bridge by um, Pomeroy and 116. That now so has South of Cracker like Farm. Uh, yeah. That now has like the 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 bowl of the concrete. <laughs> oh, it. that little thing. Oh, yeah. No, I was just the cold. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It has the vehicle launching device in front of it. <laughs> yeah, right. No, right. I was just wondering because those sidewalks are so. You know, I was thinking that little corridor is such a nice like corridor between that new where that new intersection, the new like town like little center will be the Pomeroy Center. And right. cool. But the sidewalks there are so bad. I was just running through there um on some Wednesday. No, oh it's God. it's I it's, gotta it's take off. No, okay. okay. Yeah, I think we're right. wrapping up, right? So we're pretty but those sidewalks could really use like it's such a nice it would just continue things so nicely because those sidewalks are just so awful right there. And it's good that that project is getting done that um, the bridge, Palmer village on the, the bridge village, project yeah. and now yeah. Yeah, and that and but you know it's like it's like this ugly place right between those two the school and and the um, yeah so one question Palmer I was village. wondering is with the um are there did some of the new the five sets of RFBs, the rapid rectangular flashing beacons that got ordered, did some of them get installed? 
No, not yet. They're still on the still on the list. Of so like Pine Street has two. I didn't realize Pine Street has two. Like they have one low, like down near UMass or down near 63. And there's one, an upper one. Is that right? Like near Cushman. There's one at Cushman. There's one. On Pine Street. One I did, it seemed like there were some in North Amherst that I had never really noticed before, like on Cush near Cushman. There's actually, I think, three sets on Pine Street. I guess I don't know where Pine Street ends. There's one like going towards the tracks, but then on the lower part of Pine Street. There's two. On the UMass there's end, and then the there's farm. one. The yeah, farm. okay. So I was like, wow. And is there, so there's, is there like a list somewhere? I mean, they, we don't have that many of them in town yet, but there isn't like a kind of running list of like when those get put in or something, so. You know, if in like when five, ten years, put in? no, when the RFBs or something like, you know, five or 10 years, we could say, where are those RFBs in camp uh, in Amherst or anything? You know, anyway. Well, there's a list of where they are. I mean, oh, okay. the, there's a maintenance list. Of where oh, there's a maintenance list. Is. Got it. Okay. So it looks like we're coming to the end of yeah, our Yeah, we're coming to the end and we're great. That's great. Hey, uh, it's uh, Kim at the back of your, yeah. Move to Jordan. That sounds good. Oh, and I did want to say, I mean, Stefan is here, um, but he got a new job if he wants to tell us briefly, but that was my little announcement. Uh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, Tracy, I only emailed her last night um, about this late last night. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't like keeping a secret from anyone, um, no. <laughs> but I was just very busy and I, I only started it about 10 days ago, um, the previous Monday, but I am currently the district legislative aide for state Senator Eric Lesser um in his office i actually that's why i was uh joining yeah. from my phone today because i was actually coming back from the state house and i'm there about nice. twice a month yeah and and otherwise i'm working in the hamden hampshire first hamden hampshire district here so uh with that being said i am still living in amherst and plan on continuing to live in amherst but this rule is only until january very early january uh january 4th is when the other um Senators uh, get yeah. Um, uh, so unfortunately, right? Like so, sure. Eric Lester, when he was running for lieutenant governor, he didn't also keep run to keep his seat, and so. But he's right. been, he's good for Western Mass and transportation and stuff. So. That's yes, awesome. and hopefully his success. It's great you get to over. do that work. Yeah, hopefully. It's, yes, it's it's good. Uh, the last thing I want to ask really quick before we adjourn, and I, I don't know if this is mentioned. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, but um, I, I especially I don't know if I think Guilford's still here if he is. But um, is are there any updates regarding the roundabout here at Pomeroy and uh, West Street One Sixteen near the Speedway gas station? Any? That's what uh, we I were just we were just talking about that. Um, okay, it's it that. went out. It sounds like they have a contractor who's going to do the work. It's mainly going to start in the next construction season. But um, okay, and it's so over budget, as everything is, is these days. Yeah, so. So what, what is what the that construction season? Like. Is that is that is that spring twenty twenty three? More than likely, yes. Okay. 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 Good. That's all I want. I just, and there's I like a time frame about. too, right, Guilford, in terms of that project. Is that, I don't know if the state or whoever. Wasn't it mass development funds or whoever? If it's being extended, but there's a there's a there's a time frame to spend one and a half million dollars. Oh, okay, which I Got think it. we'll hit that easily. Um, <laughs> and then Unfortunately, we'll the, right? Then we'll okay. finish the project after. Yes. Okay. Got it. Great. Now that would be a huge improvement there. So. All right. All right. So, thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Chris and thank Guilford. You. Thank you. Next month. All right. Take care. Yay. Thank you very much. All Thank right. you. Take care. All Thank right. You. Bye. Thanks.